the biggest difference between now and where I'd like us to be in the future is in the future to have business growing all of the capitals, especially natural capitals, human capitals, cleaning up all of the harm that's been done. And there's no reason why business can't do that other than how we've built business today. And that's what I'd like to see change. My personal story, when I was at university in the early 80s, I knew about climate change, limits to growth, all of these things. And I thought this would only really happen at the end of my life, after I'm dead. And then in the early to mid 2000s, it became really clear to me that climate change is happening now. And everything that I was trying to do to use business, the company I was working for, to become net positive, regenerative, to address the problems, wasn't going anywhere. Everybody I was working with recognized the problem, wanted to do something. And I realized the reason why companies can't do something about business lies more in how companies are built, the systems, and that's led me into how do we completely reinvent companies so that we can actually use them for what they can do to completely rebuild the problems we have, solve the world's biggest challenges, which is what business is for, solving challenges. If we look at how natural ecosystems work, what we're building works the same way as natural ecosystems. The stronger, the stronger ecosystem is the one that has a broader diversity of different species in it, of all types. And all of these species have a really strong level of interaction, real tangible interaction where resources flow from one species to another. And similarly, if you look in some of the older ways of doing business, say in the Hanseatic League, or if you look in some of the Asian ways of doing business, again, it recognizes that every single business is stronger if the businesses collaborate on the common health of everything and only compete in a specific narrow band. And what this then leads to is we need to build an economy that has all different kinds of species of business in it, across all of the different capitals, collaborating on things that are in the common good and competing in those narrow areas where competition is beneficial, the same as nature does. The good answer to that is there is no specific institution that must implement it first. All that's necessary here are for individual entrepreneurs to start up businesses this way, for people who are currently the investors in businesses or leading existing businesses to transform their businesses this way, and that's already good enough to start. That will generate the evidence that people who are legislators making new laws to optimize the laws we have, and enough evidence as well for other investors, other entrepreneurs to realize that this simply works better than what we're doing today. Whatever your metric for better, it works better, even if it's pure profitability, or if you're completely wanting to build a world that is fit for children with a climate that is good for everybody, it works better. I believe it will make nation state democracies more stable, more resilient, because if you look at the business world at the moment, it's not very democratic. You have on the one hand, the investors that have all of the voting rights in the company, and then on the other hand, an attempt to balance that through legislation, regulation, etc. Whereas in this approach, you bring into every company's general meeting all of the different stakeholders with voting rights. So inside each company, you have a microcosm of the full democracy of the nation. And that means instead of having these big fights at the nation level, between the different parties, you have lots of little arguments inside each company. 
And so that, I believe, will make democracy work far better.